Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast. I'm your host, Jez FM, and the Magical Learning Podcast takes a lighthearted look at important topics in business and life because we think the best way to learn is through laughter and enjoying and having a bit of fun. So that's why we pack all that information inside fun to make it as digestible as possible. Today is no different. We're actually talking to Rena Harvey about really a myriad of topics, but they all sort of come together in one. So we're talking about how to deal with adversity better, how to heal a couple of like childhood wounds, how to find your purpose. This is all tackled in today's conversation, but it's sort of looked at through a bit of a spiritual lens. So it's slightly different than a typical magical learning podcast, but it does tackle a lot of topics that we usually tackle. Now, this sort of topic does get a little more spiritual than uh, our normal conversations. And if that is going to make you tap out because, you know, maybe you're a little more, you like to look at scientific literature, this conversation actually reminded me of another book that I read earlier this year, coincidentally called After a Doctor Explores What Near-Death Experiences Reveal About Life and Beyond by Dr. Bruce Grayson. And it just basically looks at people who have passed away and come back. And 10% of those people have an experience where they sort of experience something and then come back. And he's collated that over 1,500 people. He kind of got their experience and collated it down and distilled information. And actually, a lot of the information that they talk about, Rena also talks about. So there's a bit of a interesting science um, side pack there. Uh, but I do have to say a lot of this stuff does make sense and it does seem to... Makes sense when you look at different people. She talks about why different people are successful and, and stuff like that and how to make yourself more successful. And so anyway, have a listen. I had a really good time listening to this, one of my favorite episodes. I uh, appreciate Rena being on. Uh, I've talked enough. Let's throw it to Danette and Rena and have a magical week. Hello and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast. Today I'm very excited to introduce Rena Harvey. Welcome, Rena. Um, really excited to have you as a guest and really interested. How's your week been? It's been hi, hi, Danette. It's, it's been busy. It's been awesome. busy. Media, media has um, t- turned me into a journalist all of a sudden. So How exciting. I'm climbing new mountains. <laughs> I love that. So um Rena, for our listeners and our viewers, I'd love for you to um, introduce yourself. Yes. And tell everyone um, a little bit about you. Yeah, sure. My name is Rena Harvey and basically I'm a healer. I'd like to say that on top of everything. I know we're all healers, <laughs> but a healer that you you would, people that are attracted to you of just going nice. through just a few levels just before the thing that you have kind of aced, I guess. And I'm a Reiki master practitioner. I'm also a sound therapist as holistic counsellor and a teacher. Mm-hmm. And I started my practice, my my clinic, five years ago where I do one-on-ones. Before that I was Congrats. doing tops and more group stuff and teaching children about consciousness and self-love. And then I started my practice and as it started to roll, I guess because I've done 30 years of my own healing journey and I've been on it obsessively and it was my addiction and it still is. It's just something that I just love to learn and expand and to be the best version of me in this lifetime because I owe it to my soul. (laughs) And, yeah, the formula of life came through me it was, I can't really tell you a specific moment. It was just this event, you know, it was just kind of, you know, evolving bit by bit. And two years ago, it really kind of came through me. And so I started to write this amazing manuscript, which is really this fundamental understanding for you to be the self-master. And those who are watching will see that I'm holding up Rena's new book, The Formula of Life. So tell us a little bit about this book um, because I bet our listeners and viewers want to know more. Absolutely. Go deeper, rise higher. It's The Formula of Life and that is my little catchphrase there. And it's like it it feels like, you know, it's really weird because people kind of like, oh, she's just marketing. Come on, please buy the book. No, this has got nothing to do with marketing. This has got to do with please, please read and do this work for yourself, for 
change, for self-mastery, for transformation. This is how you really understand. I've been on the journey for 30 years and for 30 years I was obsessed with it and I did everything and climbed every mountain, seen every guru and did every course and you name it, read every book. And I saw something really funny not long ago and they said, oh, here are the 15 books to help you on your self-healing journey. Or you can read one book <laughs> and get some oh, really good results. And as you would know, Danette, it's all up to you as well. But you yes. need to know, you need to do the work, but you need to know what what is the work. Show yes. tangible and easy ways for me to understand what I need to do when I have this concern, this problem in my life. And a oh, lot of I people spiral, a lot of people go through the same patterning, a lot of people yep. are kind of going, oh, my God, here I am again, here I'm doing this again, why is this happening, the victim comes out, the why. And this manuscript is giving you really logical, tangible, easy step-by-step -step ways daily to help you. And if you dedicate yourself even in one month, 30 days, you will see a massive, massive shift happening to you. Nice. I love that. So that's actually prompted a question for me. Um, we were talking before we started, um, listeners and viewers, just so you know, um, about some of the problems that we're seeing. And definitely I see because I do coaching with people. And I've noticed this year there's a lot of changes happening, lots of um, people are either going with those changes or they're really resisting what's happening in their life and, and going into, as you said, that victim um, approach, which keeps them stuck a lot longer. So really curious, what are you seeing at the moment in terms of how people are reacting to a world that is changing quite rapidly? Well, the truth is coming out. We cannot hide it. We cannot sweep things under the rugs anymore. And people are rising in their consciousness. 5D is coming without me going into the big woo-woo of the world, which I love talking about, you know, personally <laughs> with my girlfriends. But it is about this amazing amount of life force coming in and highlighting where the darkness is. And so yes. what is happening, it's not that it wasn't there. It's just that human people, humans, are actually starting to go, oh, my God, why do I feel different? Why do, Why is this happening? What I thought I knew, I really don't know. And why is it? Because it is rising the light and shining on the darkness. And the more light you have, the more consciousness you have, the more you awaken and expand in your own evolution, and that's where it starts. There's yes. so many people who are like, oh, look at the problems in the world. Dude, stop. Look at the problems in your life. Look yes. at you first. You have to look in the mirror. There is so many people who are pointing fingers and it happens in every household. They're either pointing the fingers to their partner or to their children or to the person at work or to the government or to the politicians. Sure, there is a lot of crazy stuff going on. But let's start now looking inside and looking at where you can change it. Because to tell you the truth, Danette, I know there's so much craziness in the world. It just doesn't surround my reality. Yeah, I, I love that. It does not affect my reality because yes. in my reality, I am so clear in my vision. I have such purpose. Yes. I feel so good inside. And when I don't feel good because I am still human, I can still feel all these different emotions. Yes. I have the consciousness and the tools to be able to catch it and flip it within seconds. Love and that. that's where I'm helping people because in my clinic, I see hundreds and hundreds of men and women. Yes. And they come in and it's always about themselves, isn't it? Because yes. it's always about yourself. You know, no one's yes. coming in here and saying, um, I would really like to, you know, talk about racism in the world, you know, and we yes. could talk about that, but no one does that. Because really the problem's inside them and you really want to feel, you know, Buddha will say to be selfish, spirituality will say to you to be self-aware. Yes. So we need to start taking accountability and responsibility for how we feel and what's happening in our reality. Change that first, then look at your neighbours, you know, and even when you look at your neighbours, you have an understanding that the manuscript, the formula of life is going to help you understand who you are how what you're made up of, the aspects that you have, how to catch things and flip them, how to understand how you're manifesting or creating or the reality you have, your traumas, your wounds, all of that. It's not saying, oh, and I'm helping you understand the guy next door, yes. right, because we can't lead those people to the water and we can't get them to drink the water, so why are you even wasting your time doing that? Look at you. 
And so this is a real deep, deep, and that's why it says go deeper. Why? So we can rise higher, so we can be the best version of ourselves. And you owe that to your evolution of your soul. You know, some so many people go, oh, well, it is what it is. Yeah, like you said, the victim mentality. Oh, it is what it is. Dude, you're going to come back and you're going to do it all over again. Oh, I don't believe in that stuff. Okay, cool. All right, you do you. And then you just have to let the others go. <laughs> yep, yep. And, Rena, I love your passion, your energy, your vibrancy around this. It's, you, know, you are totally on your path, like just. It's so, so clear and so true. So I love that. It hasn't come easy. It has been a lot of pain yeah. and that's why, you know, I really relate and people can really resonate with me because I was born in the darkness and I had yeah. to travel through the darkness and it was this obsession to yeah. know and to feel that there had to be more yeah. and there had to be reason. I, I was a young kid, very curious, um, living in a very dark place, saying, there has to be, this cannot be it, you know. So the passion and the purpose was really for my inner child to go, don't worry, I've got you. We're, we're going to feel great. And it's always an up-leveling, yeah. It's always a yes. rising. It never stops, you yeah. know, until you transform over. But yeah. it's always an up-leveling and understanding. And knowledge comes in and I'll obtain knowledge, but the wisdom only happens when you're applying it, when you've aced it, when you've understood it. Yeah. And so that's now prompted another question because I see this with a number of people, that the pain is there and they don't want to address that pain. They don't want to go into that pain. So I know that a lot of people will numb themselves um, through various <laughs> mechanisms. Tell me what are some of the things that going through that pain, you know, from early childhood onwards <laughs> has really helped you? Yes, but before I go into that, we yeah. are, this is the funny thing. We are all here to experience the pain. Exactly. On the other side, we're just love. We're energy. Yes. We're source. We're a collective of one. So all we feel is like an amazing ecstasy yes. of unconditional love. And we look down and use this analogy. We look down on earth and go, oh, look at them fighting and look at them heartbroken and look at them going through yeah. that. I want to feel that. I want to feel that. And it's like we come here as love. Yeah. We have to. It's the formula to feel the pain for our lessons, for our purpose, for our mission, for our evolution, and mm -hmm. then to return it to love. And it's like but when people come in and then they go through life and then they're feeling this pain, then they become the victim. And then they're like, you know, because of bales of amnesia, they don't know what's going on. And they're like, oh, and they become the victim stuck in the comfort zone and, oh, look how bad it is and look at this life. Dude, you came in here because you wanted to feel it. So it's like I always say to them, you have to get to a point and when you do the work, you start to see your life like, you know, in a bird's eye view. You start to look at yourself and, and start consciousness. There's so many wonderful things that we don't even tap into the power, the infinite power we have of our mind, that I can put myself on a chair and console her and talk to her and counsel her without feeling it because it's my higher self doing it. Mm. And it's, I'm very aware of what the human self is going through. Yes. And this is all in the book. And you start having the tools to know how to do that because I couldn't be the only person with that gift. No, we yes. all have the gift. We all have the gift to read energy, to feel what we're, what, what we're thinking, to catch those limiting beliefs. And going to your question, how do I know? Because I've had a lot of darkness. Yes. So if you can take all that amount of pain, I want you to celebrate your pain. The more pain you have, the more light you have. Yeah. If I have a little, little bit of pain, I don't have a lot of light yeah. because it's in the, I don't learn loyalty through everyone being loyal to me. I, I learn loyalty, the depths of loyalty from everyone betraying me. Yes. I learn what real self-love is by everyone mistreating me. So that's how it works. Unfortunately, that is the formula. That's where you start to understand these, you know, the universe has this funny sense of humour, but it, it is, it's a game. It's, yes. it's an evolution for us to rise higher to the next level. But people get so stuck in this unconscious, subconscious yeah. reality and they can't see anymore, but that's a choice too. Yeah. Everything's a choice. Yes. So my dark, my my childhood was very dark, very domestic, you know, a lot of domestic violence, um, yes. unhealed people raising yes. me and no safety, no, no feeling of security, no feeling of nurturing, 
that a child needed and it was like I was kind of like on my own with these feelings because you know even people who who knew that we were getting abused and knew how we were treated in the household wouldn't even say are you okay mm-hmm. and yes okay it was in the early 80s and so <laughs> it was a lot of um that's why it's really great that the truth's coming all out yes. now Yes. And we didn't have those tools and those people and, you know, people just didn't interfere in other people's lives. They yes. just went, okay, you know, this is happening everywhere. But it's still happening everywhere. We're just more aware of it now, which is yeah. great. Yeah? Yes. But would I take that away? Absolutely not. No. Yeah. I loved it. Not I loved it when it was happening. I loved it when I realised oh, my God, these are the contracts that I signed up for and these are the things that I negotiated and these are the sole members that had to play these roles, principle six, relationship and sole contracts, to help me evolve to my purpose and the lessons that I didn't learn in a past lifetime. So Mm -hmm. here I am and it's a lot harder and it was a lot deeper because maybe in the last lifetime he or she didn't learn and here I am doing that and there is a mission. And if I didn't go through all those things, Danette, and if I didn't um, move them from wisdom into, in, from sorry, from knowledge into wisdom, then I wouldn't be able to be the teacher I am. I wouldn't be able to help you. I wouldn't be able to see what I see and open my third eye and, and understand and, you know, bring in the knowledge into my into my crown and understand what is actually happening. So, yes, I'm a bit of a weirdo. I see life very different to the normal person. No, not weirdo <laughs> at all in my world. You're, you're, but you're speaking the same language. And then this yes. is what happens. And then the more that you start vibrating at this frequency, this is more that you bring in like-minded people. And then you start going, oh, my God, how can we help the people that are stuck, the people yes. that are lost. Yes. Don't worry. We've been there too. But we were just obsessed with it and learnt a lot and certified and learnt and learnt and kept on learning. And, and then when we got to that place of learning and then applying, then when we started to apply, we started to get results. You know, for the first 25 years of my life, I, I explained it as I had this massive rock in my chest that I just could not remove. Yeah. And it would be masking all the time and pretending that I'm this happy-go-lucky girl, this free spirit hippie with, you know, dreadlocks and climbing mountains. And I was inside broken. I mm-hmm. was just like, you're not going to see that because, you know, then as you get older, you kind of start seeing more and people, more people are masking. And then yeah. it was like, why are we masking? Get rid of this shit. Get rid of it. You know, get it out of my body. And whose responsibility was that? Who was going to help me do that? Me. Totally. Love it. Um, yeah. Oh, loving this conversation. It's <laughs> you and me. Yeah. We could Same. speak for hours. We could totally. speak for hours. People are <laughs> listening to this going, okay, yeah, these people could be speaking for days. I really am curious about those six principles. So let's come to your book a bit and, and share with our listeners and our viewers your six key principles, you know, in enough detail that they can start to go, oh, okay. I can see how I can start, you know, it's important for me to read this and then start applying this. Yep. So you want to know about the principles a a little bit in depth? Yeah, that'd be lovely. Um, Principle one is connection to source, connection to you. We have to understand who we are, what this being is, that we're a spiritual being made of energy come from source and that we choose to choose to come Mm -hmm. into this human body, this human existence. This principle goes deep into understanding all that and then will leave you to what are we here for? Our purpose. And in a very easy one chapter, you will, will 100%, there is no person who has not come through my hands and has gone, See, I told you I didn't know it and you still couldn't work it out. Oh, no, that never happened. Yep. You will work out your purpose and you will also align it with your career options and then you will all you will choose one of these career options that's aligned with your purpose and the work begins. Go, start, 10 minutes a day. That's how I wrote my book, 10 minutes a day on my phone. Love no, that. Hello, welcome, chapter one. And so very in-depth, understanding who we are, what we're made up of, the vast potential inside of us, the unlimited possibilities, 
the little amount that we use our mind and how amazing and powerful it actually really is. And practice and consistency and determination absolutely opens all that up. Mm -hmm. We then move into reprogramming childhood wounding. Now, there's no order, and I have to say that. I put them in this order, but mm -hmm. it's like a circle for me. So if you go to number nice. one and you get to number six, you'll understand how they thread into each other and then thread back again. So it's like a circle, yeah? Yep. Reprogramming childhood wounding is absolutely understanding the limiting beliefs in your subconscious thoughts. Nice. Working those out. People don't know what they're thinking. People don't know their limiting beliefs. People don't know why they're not living the life that they want, the life that they dream of, envision, why they think that that's for someone else and not for me. So we go really deep in looking at the fundamental years between zero and 10 nice. and looking at the stories, which is not really important. It's the meaning the little child put to the story yes. that hold on to that meaning and finding evidence throughout their entire lives. Now, the older you are, the harder it is, and I know that because those limiting beliefs have taken over and in control of your reality for a lot longer. But it only takes neurologists will say 21 to 27 days i do an exercise for 30 days but to change these cellular levels in nice. your subconscious mind so when we start to understand what we are and what we have since yeah. top, since children been holding on to the wounded part of ourselves and who is the wounded part of ourselves our trauma our triggers our victim our ego it is the part of us that tries to keep us small and tries to limit us. So unless you go there, I have so many leaders and I have so many amazing corporate CEOs and all the rest of it who are like work, work, work and here and I've got this drive and all the rest of it, but why can't I get here and why can't I get, and I'll always take them back to their childhood formative years yeah. and they're like oh my god what the hell just you know because it doesn't matter how much i'm manifesting and how much i'm envisioning and how much i'm thinking and feeling if that subconscious limiting belief is taken which will always override the conscious belief if it is holding on and it is showing you evidence that this is true you're never going to get that so we need to go in there and reprogram pretty much straight away mm. Then we move into principle three, which is positive thinking and creating alignment. What are you thinking? Stop thinking it. 75% of our thoughts are negative and 95% mm -hmm. of them are repetitive. So we have 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day. Yes. What are you thinking? People don't know because it's on autopilot. I jump up, I go to the shower, I have a coffee, I go to work, I drive here, I go there, I see the same person, I can't stand her, she's awful, you know me, and they're going through the entire thing all the time, all the time. So it's it. about, you know, understanding vibration and frequency, yes. understanding that it's not the universe is listening to your words, it's listening to the vibration yes. of your words and your vibration is your thought and your feeling. And so when you start doing these exercises and these things, like a, a client asked me the other day and they said, Rena, do you still do your affirmations like the way that you, you know? And I said, absolutely. But they mm. become, the difference is I don't do them. Sometimes I do them individually, but most of the times I do them like in a big, big pool of water because mm. I've got so used to them yes. and I know what that vibration is. I hold the vibration inside myself and that's why I can see evidence of that in my yes. reality. Nice. And so it's a it's it, it gets easier at the beginning because you're so used to this negative way or the oh, this is uh, life is just happening to me and you're kind of sitting in there and you're going oh this is what it is you know and whatever my partner sucks and you know my kids are crazy and <laughs> I hate my job. You have the power to change all that. Yes. And so we start slowly with these amazing activities and these really fundamental tools. But then after a while, it gets easier. It gets yes. easier. At the beginning, it is. You have to get comfortable with yeah. feeling uncomfortable. Yes. Then we move into, you know, and I'm kind of just like touching them. on. Yeah, the, I'm loving this. Great summary. For principle four is the light and the dark side of your soul. It's the yeah. side of your being to be exact. And this is absolutely understanding and helping the people who don't understand themselves in a wholeness 
we have duality. Everything yes. is in duality. Yes. You know, it is just duality. And so I, you know, it's light and dark. It's not good and bad. It's just yes. light and dark. Yes. And to understand that in the dark, there is still a lot of good. And people don't get that. And we're talking about the aspects of ourselves, you yes. know. But so many people have been taught to be the people pleaser and, you know, that behaviour is un undesirable and stop doing that and blah, blah, blah. But those dark aspects of you, the qualities in you, serve you sometimes. Yeah. Just like the light sometimes doesn't serve you. And people are probably listening going, what is she talking about? Well, does it serve you when you're being used in a yeah. situation? Does it serve you to come out and be compassionate? No. You're just going to keep on getting used. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to have boundaries there. Yeah. So you need to bring a dark element of you, which is what is the dark element? They're the things that live inside of me that I had since a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, the controller will have to come out of me in that moment and say, this is not going to happen because in spirituality we are always striving to live in our queendom and our kingdom. Nice. So the queen, she's not soft. I mean, she's soft and nurturing, yes. but she's not, she's not, you know, just she's not a pushover. Yes. She's strong boundaries and she understands the light and the dark. And it's not about you liking me. It's about me loving me. Yes, it's about me I love that. Understanding me. And if you don't look at the light and dark sides of yourself, you will never understand you. It's not about what people are expecting you to yeah. act on and to be like, you know. it's not, And it's not even your personality. It's, you know, your personal reality. It's more about the aspects of me that I that I can't change. They are me. They're the parts of me that make me whole and make yes. me, un, you know, strong and make me brave and make me courageous. That's not just my light. Yes. So this was, I love this, this principle. It's a game changer to really understand and go right deep into self-love. And while we're in that self-love, we move in and thread into the next principle, which is principle five, feminine and masculine power. And in the feminine and masculine power that you understand that you are made up of these two energies, that I have my feminine side and I have my masculine side and they both serve me and the relationship, this goes really deep in the relationship you have with yourself. And the relationship you have with yourself is a reflection of, of the relationship you have with your intimate partner. Mm -hmm. And so you can do two different ways by seeing your intimate nice. partner and how they're triggering you lives yes. inside of you and the unbalance that you have between your own feminine and masculine or the opposite, you know, how I'm, what I'm working with and how I relate with my own masculine and feminine is yes. actually showing me on the outside. Mm -hmm. So this one's a really, really deep understanding that your nice. feminine is hurt your, yes. you know, she's the flow she's the creative she's the nurturing she's the she's the one who just you know like I always say she just sits back you know her her legs hanging out of the car and she's in the passenger seat with her hair you know flowing and your masculine is the career orientated he's the mm -hmm. purpose driven he's the he's the one the practical the structure who's going to say I love you I worship you let's go and get all these things you want and then she in return loves him and respects him and appreciates him. So the love yeah. that you have for yourself. Yep. Then we go into the last principle, which is relationships and soul contracts, where we start to really understand what our soul cluster is, yes. our soul members, and that we have these soul members in our life that come in every lifetime and the, the roles that they we negotiate together and we contract together to help us for our lessons, therefore mm -hmm. to help us to get into our mission. Yep. And we spend, you know, so many years not liking that person, repelling that person, you know, you know, hating that person, but it is in our ancestral lineage. It is the wounds that we need to break. It is the cycles that we need to stop. It is the patterning that we don't want to repeat and to pass on to our children. And yep. it is that they have played certain roles for us so we can learn, so we can evolve, we can up-level, and so we can get onto our purpose. Oh, I love that. What a great summary. And as you were talking about the circle of these six principles, what came to me is it's actually an infinity. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It just flows in. 
Yeah. Because you'll come in with a problem and then I'll go, okay, what's uh, what's Danette having here? Okay, okay, what well, she's having a problem. And so, you know, it can be it, it can be any any one of them, any one yes. of them. But yep. it was just me getting deeper. So to begin yeah, with, you know, I've got a problem with my my you know my father, and I'll say, okay, let's go into soul contract. Let's go into relationship and soul contracts. Yeah. But then it's also your feminine and your masculine. Yeah. And then you'll come and see me again, and it's actually you're lightened up. And then you'll come and see me again, and it's like because you're not on your purpose. Let's do yeah. connection to soul connection to you, yes. and then yeah. let's go. Yeah. So they all thread into each other, I and I can. Doesn't matter, Danette, who comes through my clinic. I will, within the first five, seven minutes, I will go listening and listening and listening and then, bang, the first principle, the first, just the one that they need to first get onto that carriage, that comes out first and then we delve deep into that. And their oh. awareness, their transformation, and that's why I had to share it. That's why I had to, it had to come through me and I had to share it because the transformation that I was watching happened all the time within yes. myself first when I was doing yes. it for myself all these years and I yeah. didn't even know what I was doing, like it was called the formula of life. And then I started to do it to my clients and then I started seeing this amazing transformation of this awareness because that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, like totally. You awareness of the problem and where yes. it's coming from and what's happening and why you've created it, that's when you can get on top of it and you go, okay, and there's layers to it and we might yes. be getting something but but it's, it feels easier yeah. and you're more in control of it because yeah. you do create your own reality. Mm. Oh, yes, totally. So I bet there's probably some listeners and viewers who are like, I'm a little bit interested, I'm going to read that book. But what might that first chat with you look like and sound like and feel like? So let's give them just a little bit of a sense of, you know, they might be a little bit nervous. What what happens? Just a little bit of an idea. Look, I always explain it like this. The healing journey is uncomfortable. Yes. Of course. Of course. Like, you know, that's why so many people don't want to get on it, yeah. you know, because they're like, oh, you know what, that means that changes have to happen and I might have to actually look in the mirror and realise how much I don't like myself. Um, my clients come in and all of a sudden they're sitting there crying and, the, and I, I already know and I always say to them, you're crying because you realise what you've been doing to yourself yeah. and, you know, the, and I separate the, the, the inner child with the yes. human parent, the, yeah. the adult parent, and I say it's in this moment that you've realised what you've been doing to this child inside of you and now you're feeling yes. really, really hurt. But that's just the beginning. And I use this analogy. It's like the, the, the healing tunnel and it's optional. You don't have mm -hmm. to walk in. You can stay in the gray zone. You can stay in the comfort zone. You can stay in the victim mentality. That's fine. Lots of people do. Yeah. And then they, and they never do anything about it. And then they get addictions and then they get, you know, pain and then they get cancer and they get illness. That's fine. You can stay there. No mm -hmm. one's, it's your choice. Or, or you can do this. You can walk into the healing tunnel. Now, when you walk in, the door's locked behind you and it's dark, yes. it's uncomfortable, yes. and there's hands coming out of the tunnel slapping you across the face. Yep. What are you going to do? You can't get back out. The doors have locked. Yes. What are you going to do? Keep you're going. Gonna, you're going to move forward. And yeah. I promise you, like I promise you, like I, I can't tell you enough, it will only get easier because in that dark tunnel, those hands, like I always explain, it become, you know, nudges and then they become pats on the back and then they become applause and you are walking towards the light. Yes. Yeah, not death. I'm talking about yes. understanding consciousness. Yep. That's what consciousness is. It's a yep. self-awareness that I'm creating, that the infinite power that I have and that I create everything yeah. in my reality. Yep. So if you're sitting here listening and you're nervous and you're going, wouldn't you rather be uncomfortable for like a couple of weeks or a couple of months you've been uncomfortable for years you've been uncomfortable and you've been stuck in this zone for years for decades enough and it is for the brave it is for the courageous and you probably hear that over and over again you know in healing and transforming and in life changing because you know if there's a risk involved what's the risk that every single person that I actually associate with myself at the moment actually might not exist in the future, but you're going to feel better. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you're going to have like-mindedness. You're going to, 
you should be able to detect that when I walk away from someone, like I'm having, you know, an interaction, do I feel better about myself or do I feel worse? Yeah. Do I feel like I was drained and used and, you know, gossiping and all this, you know, low vibration? Or do I feel better? Yes. And because people have been feeling so crappy for such a long time, they just think that this is life, yeah? But yeah. It's not. Even when something, you know, life is up and down, it's a heartbeat. Yeah. So even when life is going really down and it feels really dull, when you have consciousness, you don't feel the dullness. You see it as learning. It's like yes. the next, what's happening here? Like when yeah. something bad happens in my life or something that's making me feel uncomfortable, I look at it like, you know, this curious little kid, you know, that's going into a dark forest and, wow, what's going on here? Why is this happening? All right. Now I'm going to stop asking why this is happening. Let's get through it. Yeah. Let's go through this, you know, actually go through it and then rise. And this is where you rise higher. This is where your awareness and your understanding of self. And then the more work that you do and through the book, these this book, Danette, is activated. And I've had this very huge channel coming through me Maybe while I was writing while I was writing it, and it said when people read this, there is going to be a part of their brain that just opens up, just like unlocks, and that's why oh, I beautiful back, you know, back this, you know, yeah. this uh, secrets to healing, but it's it's guiding you, it's un making you understand, it's revealing who you truly are and the, the self-mastery. And then I was like, oh, because I would love that. And people are starting to call me already and, you know, writing me emails and saying, okay, what's going on? Why do I see? Why can I hear people's thoughts? This is weird. This is happy. You know, like everyone's different, right? But yes. there is awareness and it's nice. like I hear, right, right? Yep. <laughs> and so then you don't become attached to yes. life. Yes. You flow through it with detachment and you'll understand what that all means in such a deeper level because we're just here for an experience yeah. and we're here to love it all and to love ourselves more. But I can only love you how much I love myself anyway. Totally. Oh, I love, love, love that answer. And I was just thinking that is so like our podcast name and I can't be magical learning because it is really about going from this stuff that served us at one stage, not serving us anymore as we rise we're going to change and we can look at it as this is hard, it's yucky, I don't like it, I don't want to play, to this is actually unleashing the highest version of me or getting closer to that higher version where life is actually joyful, even when shit is happening, pardon my French, that yeah. we can see that there's purpose behind that. There's things that are happening that are supposed to happen, not You've resisting them. you contracted all of it. Yeah. you contracted all of it for your highest potential so you can get onto this this understanding of self so you can because we're all gifted we're all here for a reason we're all yeah. here to share something to serve others to help evolve ourselves and our own soul evolution and then yeah. to share it but yeah. there's no use you know i my purpose is to empower but yeah. if i don't empower myself how can i empower you then, then, then I'm the wounded healer, totally. yep. the person who's fake and who's going sitting here saying, oh, and, you know, no, I have to empower me first. I have to yes. love me first and then I can do that and share that knowledge and that wisdom and then it's up to you. You can learn yes. it. You know, we've got lots of people in this world who have read all the books and, you know, have know the information, but if you don't apply it and you're not practising and you're not living by this, then you're not yeah. really really yeah. rising you know yeah. if you know you can't catch your limiting beliefs and your limiting beliefs will always be there it's just yeah. about catching them they become the more work you do you become so conscious of how loud that wounded child is that okay. subconscious limiting belief is it's yeah. so loud that you go whoa hold on dude you're not in control i'm in control here that's yeah. not going to happen i don't give you power yeah. i'm going to tell you the new truth yes you know and you will have changes. I'll tell everyone, you know, who does the work and who's on the work, and I can show you thousands of testimonials. Rena, oh, my God, this just happened, and then I said that yesterday, and then this happened. There you go. Yeah. Because we're here and we are so superhuman and we can manipulate energy because yep. we are made of energy. 
Yep. And we can create matter and we can do so many amazing things and live this amazing life that we yeah. all that we want, that we we hope for. And we take now the word hope out and we go, let's do it. And yeah. it's up to you. Yep. Yeah. And I love, you know, that bit at the end there about we get to create that reality. And so the more conscious we become, that reality obviously is more joyful most of the time for people. And when, you know, when stuff's happening, you can still then step back and observe it and continue to radiate at that beautiful level of energy, which yeah. I love energy because you do feel it. And you know, to be in rooms with people where they've got that gorgeous vibrational energy it makes a huge difference and there's no question yeah. in that it's just sort of reflecting back what you were saying and how important that is yes yeah. it's like you you start to see the joy yes in 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 the darkness as well yes you kind yes. of like i see the joy in the darkness like sometimes i'm a bit weird i kind of see too much joy in the darkness where i go oh my god this is great cuz this is where we're learning you're always yes. learning so much more i'm not yeah. really learning a lot when there's you know butterflies and fairies around yeah. the entire time yes. you know that's yeah. more kind of the flow that's yes. when i know that i'm in flow yeah. but it's when that uncomfortableness or that problem as you might call it comes up yeah. and i look at it and i'm like I'm, i look at it like oh i, I kind of have a bit bit of joy because I'm going to work this out. It's like, you know, become the detective, okay? Yes. What's going on here? Like what? Okay. And it always comes back to me. Yes. So if it's in my reality, it's for me. Yes. And people are going, no, but I've got this friend and they're really, if that friend is your friend and you're listening to this story and you're involved somehow, mm. it's for you. Yes. The world is conspiring in your favour. It is happening for you. Nice. Oh, I love that, Raina. All right, we're nearly at the end, but I reckon let's finish with talking about the infinite power of your mind. So when you know, we've been talking about that consciousness, you know, obviously people's thoughts impact on, and we're not aware of those, as you said, 60 to 70,000 thoughts a, uh, a day. You know, if if you were talking to leaders, you know, not even leaders, just people who want a better life, what are some simple things I could do to tap into that infinite power of their minds? Think about it's almost like I say it's like buying a computer no. and it is a brand new computer. It has no data on it. It has nothing on it. It has no, you know, no apps or systems. And you unpack this computer and you have to start to put the data in, the resources in, the information in. So, of course, there's ways to work out what the limiting belief is. Yes. But then we're reprogramming it. So it becomes I'm in control. So when I wake up in the morning, oh, my goodness, how many times do I wake up and I'm feeling tired and I've got a four-year-old kid as well and I'm like, oh, my God, you know, and then I catch it and mm. I'm in my computer, I feed it the information I want. And I say, it's going to be a great day. And as soon as I say that and I vibrate that and then I smile, it starts to alter. And I'm capable or I feel peaceful or yes. whatever it is. By the time I've gone to the toilet and I've looked in the mirror and then I, I look at myself and I go, I love you. You are so beautiful. And then I'll say to her, what do you want to do today? Nice. And then... We will keep on going. So consciousness, the amount of time I talk and feed information, not my limiting beliefs having time to even come through because I am feeding it. Now, the more you practice that and I'm feeding this computer and I'm feeding it, that's when you start to see, you can really feel, it's very obvious when the limiting belief comes out because it feels so different to the vibration that you've been purposely holding on to. Nice. So then when something's not right, I feel it and I go, ooh, that's getting my attention. Is it coming from my subconscious belief system? Do I think I'm not good enough at the moment? Where is the doubt? I can hear doubt. I can, why? Because I've been feeding the mind and creating it. To create alignment and this vibration, it's like faking it to begin with. It's like pretending. So if I want to be a leader tomorrow and I'm a bit nervous and I'm not really confident, I have to become it right now. 
Yes. Otherwise, I'm going to step on stage or I'm going to step in that boardroom or I'm going to step anywhere and I'm not going, I'm going to let my subconscious limiting belief take over. So I have to convince my mind doesn't know the difference of it happened, it's happening in the future. It, you know, it's if I, I could tell you a story about the past that was really traumatic and my body thinks that it's happening right now. Yes. Because I vibrate that emotion and I vibrate that feeling and those thoughts. So it's about if I can do that, if I can talk to you about, example, when I was five, I climbed a fence and I fell down and I go through these all these emotions that I feel like my body feels like it's going through that, you know, climbing the fence and falling down right now. Well, then I can do it in the opposite and I can do it positive. And yes. I'm like, I can pretend that I feel really confident and become really confident now. And I can oh. feel this vibration that I've never really experienced before, but I can just somewhere, somewhere in your filing cabinet, you'll have something that aligns with it. Somewhere I can say to you, where did you think that you led people? And you might go, oh, I was like 15 and we went to, you know, the park and I knew the way, you know, it could be something stupid. Okay, great. Let's go there for a second. Take that file out and then Put that into your computer. Put that yeah. into your mind and feel that feeling. Now let's expand from there. So, again, it's your choice, Danette. Mm -hmm. it's, it's I'm living because I am expanding to the possibilities that I want to become yes. instead of holding myself back to the wounded, the trauma yes. that of, of I know I'm not good enough, which we all have it, all 8 oh, million of oh, us. Oh, we all have it. I've never met anyone through my healing, through uh, in the outside world, in my social, you know, world, my lifestyle, I've never met anyone who has not said, I just didn't think I was good enough. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know some amazing, very, very high profile people who still don't think they're good enough. Yeah. yeah? It always yeah. comes. What happens is you hold it, you know, it happens to me. But because yeah. I train so much with the positive thinking yes. and alignment, I can catch it and I go, hey, bah, 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 I've got you. Yep. I give you power. I know you're saying this story and I know even where I came from and I know when you were five this happened and but I'm not going to give you power. Today, right now, right now, that's the trick, right now, not I'm going to become yes. worthy. I am worthy right now. I'm going to choose to feel worthy. Oh, but you're not. I know. I'm pretending to begin with so I can get the flow. Yes. Like I'm just going to get the flow of it. And by the end of the day, you'll feel a little bit better. And then the next day, you'll feel a little bit better. And then it'll come in, the doubt will come in. Ah, shh, stop. So the the work's constant. I yes. talk to myself, feel this vibration from the morning to the night. Mm -hmm. And people are like, oh, my God, aren't you exhausted? No, I feel yeah. amazing. That's why, and, you know, my biggest mantra, and I tell all my clients our biggest mantra, because everything works out for me. Yeah. So everything works out for me. Yep. I'm, always I'm always guided. I'm always protected because I'm always supported because everything always works out for me. And that's mm. what you should start saying every mm. day from repeat from the minute morning to the night. And then that vibration will start coming through. And physics, vibration is physics. It doesn't lie. Yes. What I put out, I get in return. It's a yes. magnet. So yes. if I believe that everything works out for me, what am I worrying about? There's nothing to worry about. Totally. That always works out for me. Yeah. And it does anyway. So many people worry, worry, stress, 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 and then they look back at it and they go, oh, well, then, and, and then this happened and then it kind of worked out. Well, of course it did. <laughs> oh, that's so true, Red. Um, so we're just about at the end. This has been the best conversation. We're going to get you back with the whole team so you can talk to them as well. Yeah, good. Is there, is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners and viewers before we finish up? Yeah. I, it was, you know, every um, publisher and every person who goes through the writing process, obviously, yeah. anything that you put out in the world, it always is a target audience. Yes. And they said to me, Rena, who's your target audience? Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know, you can never say everybody, yes. but it felt like everybody, you know, especially if you're, you know, you can read, go for it. <laughs> but it wasn't. When I started to really feel into that, it was parents and want to be parents. Nice. You know? Yes. Parents who were already parents and the people who were like, oh, yeah, and I want to get married and I want to have kids. No. And why it became, became a, a chapter, my last chapter is Dear Parents and Future Parents. Nice. And it is a beautiful chapter writing and speaking 
to parents because it is your responsibility, yeah. not only for your children, for the next generation, for evolution of our of our life. Yes. We need to start to rise consciousness. We need to start to understand the power that we have yeah. and we create our reality and the self-love. And when you're, the parent is doing the work, yeah. it automatically resonates and ripple effects to the children and therefore you're not giving your children all this wounded unhealed trauma coming from your ancestral line and your own that are just on repeats you know if you're feeling something and experiencing something in your life go and ask your mom or your dad you know did you feel this or did you you know or did grandma or grandpa and you will see very very soon how this pattern just keeps on coming through yep. and if we want to stop that then you need to stop it. You need to be the brave individual in your family line to put their hand up and say, okay, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. It's me. You know, my kids, I have three children and my eldest is 21. And he, you know, I said to him, you know, I remember like a year ago and I said, that's okay. There was an issue. And I was like, this is okay. I've got it. I'm going to break this. I'm going to break this cycle. And he nice. looks at me, thank you, mom. And I'm Aww. like, I'll do it, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you want to laugh and go, can you just take one or two maybe? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is my responsibility mm -hmm. to do that for my children yeah. and then yeah. then it is easier for them. They yes. still have their lessons and they'll still have, but the trauma doesn't have to be so big. Yeah. It doesn't have to be so wounded. It doesn't have to be so unconscious. So, and you know, at least if there's one parent doing the work, if there's two parents doing the work, well, oh, my God, you are the master of the universe. How lucky is that? Yeah. But if it's one parent, I say at least it's 50% for that yes. child because 50% yep. comes from mum, 50% comes from dad. As long as one of them is doing the work, yep. two, brilliant, one, at least we're starting to get that 50%, you know, healed. Yep. That's 50% momentum. Oh. And so that's my message for you know the target audience yeah heal your stuff make it easier for the next generation love it <laughs> and love i'm it, sorry love it. and i'm sorry no, no, no. and i'm sorry that it had to be you but you know don't complain just do it because you're capable you're capable you could do yes. it <laughs> So if any of our listeners, um, and I'm sure there'll be lots, and also our views, viewers would like to get in contact with you, where's the best place? And while while you're sharing that, I'm just going to hold up your book again. So our so, listeners. Uh, are this on, yeah, on my website, obviously, and you'll have the links yes. attached. And um, on socials, I'm only on Instagram. I'm a bit lazy on the Facebook. I don't really like its vibration as much. Yes. But Instagram, I do a little bit of TikTok, you know, but Instagram's probably my best social and on YouTube. So you'll always see my podcasts up on YouTube. Excellent. And if you want to see me in person, I do online. If you're in Melbourne or around Melbourne, Victoria, you can always come and see me in person in my clinic. And also I do online as well. And also every month I because it is my purpose to really help you with this work, I yeah. apply the formula of life to your problems live on stage every month and I we have audience interaction where we have these brave courageous individuals that step up with me on stage and we show you so you could understand how you can quickly get a problem in your life and a concern or a stress or a worry and apply the formula life and understand it nice. so always now that I've written the book and you're reading it and you're doing the work I'm also helping you apply it and apply it. And you can go to YouTube and see that under Rena Harvey as well. Nice. Yes. Oh, Rena, that's been such a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much. Um, and to our listeners and our viewers, wishing you all a magical week. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>